<laughs> to say this week has been stressful is an understatement. This has probably been the most stressful week of our lives to date. We are so thankful for today's sponsor. The sponsor of the video today is HelloFresh. Gosh, we've been partnering with them for two years now and just, it couldn't be a better partnership. There's a reason why they're America's number one meal kit. They're awesome. They have more five-star recipes than any other meal kit on the market. The thing that I appreciate is that it just takes the stress of dinner planning off of your plate, pun intended. Most of their meals you can have done in 30 minutes and they even have a 20 minute quick meal option. So tonight we're doing the sweet and smoky pork tenderloins. It's really nice because they come with this card. There's six simple steps and it's just so easy to follow. What you wearing there? This. My earrings. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? I did not. It hmm. is funny though. I, I just realized it. I'm getting ready to do a little touch up on my roots here. And as I was like, getting my hair ready, I realized I had put two different earrings in today. It's What's really funny is when I see pediatric patients, I have them look at my ear and I always say, like what kind of earring am I wearing? Cause then it just holds their gaze on my ear so I can examine their eyes. And then I like have them switch to the other ear so I can examine the other eye. And I always say something like, did I put an earring in that ear too? And then I'll say like, did I put the same earring in? And I'm just joking, obviously I have the same earring in both ears, but it makes them look. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had like a six year old patient today that I asked that question too. <laughs> <laughs> Did they tell you? I think he said yes, but by that point their eye is like so bleached out. From... Yeah, right. Oh lord. It's really nice having HelloFresh pre-portioned ingredients. It's just a heck of a lot less waste. I also love the flexibility that HelloFresh provides because say you're gonna go out of town for a week, you can skip a week, change your delivery date, you can even change the type of meals that you want delivered. Honey. You're welcome. I've been a little bit busy. <laughs> Doing what? I don't know. Avoiding radio frequencies? <laughs> Good one. I don't, I don't know. So HelloFresh is committed now more than ever to making delicious. So HelloFresh is committed to making fresh, delicious food available now more than ever and taking extra steps to keep its employees and customers safe. Yeah, I nailed it. So what are you waiting for? Go to HelloFresh.com and use our code 80, Brad and Rach, to get a total of $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem and for more details. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Enjoy today's vlog. That's not good. Nope, so are you, are you calling them right now? Yeah, I, I just texted them and then I'll, I'll give them a call. Yeah, I would call them now. Do you want me to call the police? Yeah. Uh, and should we wait to see if they reply? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. This, this is will... a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Call the go ahead and call the police department, and I'll forward you like the guy's name and address and stuff. Okay. And then also, if if you get a hold of them and you're talking to them and they don't know why the check didn't clear or whatever, she said don't tell them that it looked fraudulent or 
whatever the word the wording said fictitious fictitious or altered um she yeah. said don't don't use that terminology just say it didn't go through and we're concerned and that we're going to need the van back until we can straighten this out right but she I also said we shouldn't have had the title because of the lien so i don't know how we had the title yeah we had the title it just had the u.s bank as the lien holder so it must be just like a copy of it or something I don't know. Okay, well, let me know. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Love you, bye. Yeah. I'm really hoping this isn't one of those, like, lesson learned kind of things. I don't even know where to begin on this story. I'm gonna call the police real quick. So you know when you make a huge mistake and when you're like telling somebody about the huge mistake that you made and then they tell you, oh, well you should have done this. That's not the kind of advice or input we're looking for right now. It's just really frustrating when you, for example, you sell a vehicle and you go ahead and like give them the vehicle, sign over the title before the check clears and then you figure out it was all a scam and you are like telling this story to somebody and they're like, oh you never give them the vehicle or the title without the check clearing. I don't know why I'm so pissed off about that right now, but it's like I've heard it three times this morning. Of course, of course we know that. <laughs> that seems really obvious and this is exactly why. I'm on the phone with US Bank, our local branch of US Bank, um, and I guess she's just gonna try to pull up a copy of the check and see exactly what, what looks fraudulent about it. We thought, so we thought it was a cashier's check, which is, I don't know, but seems a little safer than a personal check, obviously. Um, but I guess you can for, forge those as well, or counterfeit, do a counterfeit check. At least there's really great hold music. This is gonna be a really, really, really expensive life lesson. Absolutely. Okay. Here's the manager's number. Okay. Three one four. Okay, and then one of the bankers' number. Um, I don't know which one. It's just a banker's. Number. Okay. Okay. Um, is three. Okay. Is somebody from that branch? Okay, and you suggest okay. calling the manager first. Uh, yes, I would. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you very All right. much. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hopefully that's good. <sighs> okay, it shows that it got returned. Let me see if I can find out the reason. Okay. Okay. 
That is not good. Um, so, okay. There's like no, no question it was fraudulent. Right, that means that we tried to connect with Commerce Bank and they did not say that it was a good check. They said that it was already, uh, typically uh, a check like that would be uh, used for that number and then someone, a fraudster, would basically reprint the check using that information and then change the pay view around. Okay. So it's already been cashed and, and most, most likely, I mean, I don't have all that information in front of me, but that's, that's a typical, typical way that fraudsters have to do it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. You have a good day. You too. Thanks. Have a good day. Did you ever see this guy? I didn't. My husband did. Okay. Um, let me go run this info and we'll see if it even comes back now to somebody that has an ID. Okay. And then I will see if I can get a picture. Okay. And then I'll give you a picture of him. I think and this then... is this is the information that he said was his dad. Oh, so okay. this isn't the actual guy that took the van. That guy, I all we have is his phone number, which is at the top. Oh, okay. That phone number right there. That's the supposedly the son who was purchasing the van for his dad. Whenever they picked up the van, did they actually come in person and pick it up? Uh huh. A lot of the, a lot of the scams like this, they'll send like a car hauler service, and uh, they never even, they never even, you know, you don't even know who you're dealing with at all. Oh, uh, okay. They do it all third party. So. Yeah, there was a guy that came to pick it up. Like the... Okay. Um, let me go see if I have any information on on the phone number or this carry guy or anything. I'll be, I'll be back in just like. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. But you gave them like a bill of sale and. He's... Yeah, exactly. And when you guys filled out the bottom part, did you put, I guess, the dance info in there? Whatever info he texted us. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, we still have sure. that bottom part. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure. Yeah, I've pulled up his info. Um, already. Did he contact you about the bottom part? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Did he Okay. I was just telling your wife that. Um, it, it's kind of a, a crappy situation with, with stuff like this. I've, I've gone to a couple calls like these. Um, every time I've tried to submit to a prosecutor for charges, um, they've declined. Um, they, they say that basically because a, an agreement was made to sell the vehicle, that it's not stolen. And then as far as the, the check not being valid that's an issue between the bank and the prosecutor's office with the bad check division but it doesn't it doesn't fall under a bad check until the bank actually cashes it and then the funds didn't transfer so if the funds if they stopped it before they attempted to cash it then it is uh, it's not even a bad check technically so Ultimately, um, you, you do have a, a civil case. If I'm going to try to track that phone number down and see if I can get a name, and then you would have a, a civil case against the kid that came and picked up the car. You could sue them for the cost of the car and or the car um, to be returned to you. Right, gotcha. But I can't, I can't list the van as stolen or anything like that. Yeah, that's crazy. You can't afford to stole huh. Well, you well, literally handed them the car and the title. Yeah. So that's, that's true. not. Yeah, story. ultimately, I mean, our, I, I see it both ways. I would be extremely frustrated if I was in this situation. Luckily, I've never been in this situation in, in, in myself. Um, but ultimately, um, a, a transaction did occur, and you provided the the van and the keys and, every, and the title and everything over to them. Um, so that that's why it's not considered stolen. If if he had say drove up and like you know broke in your van and drove off with the van without a transaction, that would be stolen. Oh, I get it. That, so uh, I guess the question I have: so like, what are they gonna do? Obviously, we have a lien on the title of the van, so they can't register it. Yeah, they're so not gonna they... build a title it or anything. So I don't really, honestly, I don't really know what they do with the vehicles. Um, I would assume that they're probably gonna scrap it and. 
part it out. Yeah. Um, if that, you know, if that's what that route is, I'm, I'm sure that they don't realize that there's a lean. Uh, they'll probably figure that out when they go to try to title it. Yeah, he knew. So. Okay, well, thanks for your help. Uh, Rachel, I think we need to get our story out there. Yeah, this is exciting to be in this position to <laughs> inform people. I feel so privileged. Yeah, exactly. Don't be an idiot like like I was. If it makes you feel better, somebody uh, he sold their house to basically the same. Oh my lord! The same into the same type of thing. Why can't people just like work an honest job and make <laughs> money? That one, the realtor, uh, the realtor actually uh, was like, "This doesn't seem right," and, he, and they kind of stopped it before the sale ever went through. Um, well, that's wow. good. But yeah, they were ready to do it. Yeah, it was like a two hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars sale. Um, <laughs> but they were the the buyer, the seller was like, "Yep, deal. We're accepting it. We'll take, you know, we're gonna take like a under the table check offer. You know, we're gonna exclude the realtor and all this." Oh jeez. And, and it was like gonna be. It actually ended up being the same guy from that boat situation I told you about. So he he was going around he trying to do it to. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. All right, I gotta let you go. I gotta pay you so, Okay. All right. All right. Like, like I said, um, if you come up with anything extra, call, give okay. that report number. I'll be on all day today, all day okay. tomorrow. Okay. And then some days next week. Okay. Um, if we find a, a name. I'll give you a call okay. so that way you can get a civil suit going. Sounds good. So, all, all right. right. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, try to have a better day. Okay, that's, that I'll try. Yeah. Stay safe out there. Yep, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so some time has passed. I've cried a few times. I think we've exhausted all of our options as far as the information that we have. And I'm pretty sure at this point we're just all having waves of realization that we made a very big mistake and financially it's going to take some time to recover and it's just the the realization just keeps it it just takes time to like realize what all of this means but it was a pretty pretty large financial mistake so anyway i'm trying to just like figure out what to do with myself here i put on toy story for the kids because they they don't understand like I just, Eloise is napping. I don't know how to even like create this clip here. And what are you guys watching? Toy Story. You guys still have your pajama tops on. Yeah. Is it good? You guys like this movie? Hey Lyndall, do you know where the strainer is? The strainer that I got you guys for your kitchen, do you know where it is? You don't? Where is it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the metal strainer that I got you guys to play with? Where is it? Okay, she usually knows exactly where everything is. I'm making like a knockoff version of the pumpkin cream cold brew from Starbucks, which is really, really good, but it does have dairy in it. So I cheated and got it a few times. Um, just to kind of see what Eloise, where she's at in her dairy sensitivity. But I made the knockoff recipe with oat milk half and half and I think it's gonna be pretty good. I already made the cold brew yesterday, it's in the fridge and then this is like the pumpkin cream that goes in it. And I need a strainer to strain it because there's like pumpkin, actual pumpkin puree and all of the spices, you wanna strain those out after you kind of cook them in. So. I thought maybe she would know where the strainer was, but I bet it's in their room. Is it in your room, Lyndall? Where? She usually knows where everything is. I, at this point, I think just feel like emotionally exhausted and I'm emotionally checked out. <laughs> this is such a first world problem though. I'm trying to like, there it is. It looks like it's been stepped on. I'm trying to just keep perspective that like even with this even with the setback, we are still very blessed in so many ways and this is just money. In the grand scheme of things, it's not, it's not a catastrophe, even though it's very inconvenient and a huge bummer. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, I'm making this pumpkin cold brew. I can leave, if it's good, I'll leave a link for the recipe in the description box. And if I forgot, please remind me because sometimes I forget to do that. Or Brad forgets to do that. It's hard to like edit a video and if we say things along the way like that we'll link, it's hard to remember to do all that as you're editing. I'm sure if we just wrote it down, that would be a good way to remember. not exactly cheese cloth, but it's kind of. It's not even gonna come through, barely. Barely. Pumpkin cold furu cream. I feel like I can't even talk. This is ridiculous. So yesterday, not yesterday, Monday, I was driving to work and my coffee fell out of the cup holder upside down onto my seat and like probably three fourths of my coffee poured into my seat to where I was just sitting on it on my way to work. And I mean, I couldn't do anything about it. I was driving, so. I was also wearing it rather than drinking it, so I was trying to function without any coffee. It was not a good day. This whole week has been like a Monday. This whole year has been like a Monday. The answer, and uh, feel free, free to call back uh, the 1-800. Whenever you want to get updates on your uh, on your case, and I do have an incident number for this, okay. you want to take note. Eight, eight, eight. Okay. So, All right, that is your incident number for uh, the stolen vehicle computer process. And um, as I said, sir, uh, we have uh, found the vehicle. Uh, I mean, we have a location right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and contact the police. Uh, if the vehicle is stationary. Okay, uh, perfect. Yeah. Police, they don't dispatch. I mean, they don't go on scene when the vehicle is moving. But as of now, it is it, it is stationary. So I'll go ahead and then proceed to contact the police. Uh, to this location that will get you posted if we have any information about it. Uh, we'll call you back if we have any updates. But feel free, feel free to call us back whenever you want to. Uh, we'll track okay, just a quick question. I know you're not allowed to tell me the location. Can you tell me what city it is? Come here, Linda. Yeah, but I am actually able to tell you, sir, because then uh, you will have to follow up, uh, like, you can take the case, you will have to call. Good, Linda. Well, then, then, it's the jurisdiction in your heart. So, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you for your help. Uh, you're welcome, sir. I do wish you the best luck and uh, we'll go ahead and contact the police, okay? Yeah, so, so Toyota contacts the police. Yes, sir. We do that and uh, we, now we're going to work with them. We're going to send them location so the time we get the location for people every minute and they can get the location. So, uh, at this point, uh, the vehicle is stationary now. Uh, someone's going to have to leave right away. Probably from a radio, actually. Oh, okay. right now, uh, That's amazing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. 
Your vocals, sir. Okay. Hello, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right Holy Well, so that's interesting. So Toyota literally is sending that information right now to the police department so that they can go check it out. So. What police department? In Kentucky? I, yeah, the Kentucky one. Really? Yeah. So, interesting. I just got off the phone with the deputy. The plates are stolen. So technically it's stolen plates. So we could get the plates back. Woo! But he said if a, if like a Kentucky, a local Kentucky police officer goes there, he's not sure how they're going to handle it. Because his prosecutor would say that it's technically not stolen. Right. And technically it's not check fraud because the check never cleared. The bank didn't actually Dang check. Dang it. Yeah, so how do they stop these people? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't so, it would be nice if we could go go to U.S. Bank and be like, you need to report this as check fraud. Right. That way, it's a federal offense. Right. But, I mean, they're not going to do it. You don't think? No. Why wouldn't they? Because what do they, they have, have to lose? They have to cash the check. Oh, and put the money in our account. According to the processor, the prosecutor for Camden County. So, I don't know if we need to go to the state level or what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs>